last night, February 3rd, 2020, were the uh, Iowa caucuses, uh, the first primary event in the United States. And in typical fashion, there are already glitches that cause a delay in releasing the results of, of the caucus. Uh, instead of being released last night like they should have been, they won't be released until sometime today. If you remember, the Iowa caucus received, uh, well, had some problems in 2012 and 2016. And it's no wonder. Uh, the caucus system in Iowa, for Democrats anyway, is, is rather complicated. As compared to the Republican process, which is basically just a secret vote and no mathematical formula, the Democrat process of choosing a candidate in Iowa is, is, is rather long and drawn out. Um, see, each, each candidate and their delegates gather in a certain spot at the caucus site. And in order to be considered a viable candidate, you have to receive 15% of the votes available uh, at the caucus that night. Now, if, you, if your candidate doesn't receive that 15% uh, viability vote, then, then that candidate's supporters must choose another candidate to support. And when it's all said and done, it's a mathematical formula that determines how many delegates a candidate receives in Iowa. So as you can see, there are some issues to begin with. The process is, is well, uh, you know, convoluted. And, you know, they can't seem to get it right. <laughs> the Iowa caucus was last night, February 3rd, 2020. And following in the footsteps of the, uh, the controversies, of the 2012 caucus and the 2016 caucus, there are again um, indiscrepancies which have delayed the outcome of the caucuses. Instead of being released last night, which was the goal, they won't be released until today, February 4th, 2020. Now to understand where the problem begins, you have to understand the Iowa caucus process itself. Unlike the Republican process uh, at the caucus, which is a simple secret vote, the Democrat process is, is rather long and convoluted. Um, each candidate and their supporters gather at different, different corners around, around the caucus site. And in order to be considered a viable candidate, you have to receive 15% of the, the votes present at the caucus site that night. Uh, candidates who do not receive 15% viability vote then have to decide on another candidate to support okay, or, or declare themselves uncommitted. And by the end of the night once everyone has realigned themselves with the candidate they're going to support, then there's a mathematical formula to determine which, who, which candidates get how many uh, delegates. Um, so it's easy to see how this process can become unraveled quickly and, and cause issues. And for the third straight election, it's happened again in Iowa. So let's meet the, the top Democrat candidates for 2020. Now, originally there were 29 who were running. Uh, we're down to 11, but I've narrowed that down to six, uh, who I believe are the only ones capable of making it through the process. And ultimately, uh, I've narrowed that down to three. Uh, so I'm going to start with number one, and that is uh, 
That's Bernie Sanders, of course. Uh, Senator from Vermont. Now, technically, he's an independent running on the Democrat ticket. But he had a hell of a fan base in the last election, so I'm sure that's going to follow through into this election. So he's number one on the list. Um, Number two on my list is, of course, former Vice President uh, Joe Biden of Delaware. Uh, You know, simply because he's connected to Barack Obama. I believe he's he's going to weather the storm and he's going to make it through. Uh, well, let's see. We have uh, after after him. Um, I I think Elizabeth Warren stands a good chance, Senator from uh, Massachusetts, uh, also billionaire philanthropist. For all you anti-billionaire folk out there, Elizabeth is pretty rich. Now, uh, that leaves us with Michael Bloomberg, former mayor of New York, also billionaire philanthropist. Uh, You don't really hear much of him, so that's why I'm not giving, you know, not giving him a top spot. Uh, (laughs) Pete Buttigieg, former mayor in Indiana, uh, seems to be holding his own. He... He could be a dark horse. And then there's uh, Tulsi Gabbard, a former representative of, well, she is representative from the state of Hawaii. Those are my my top six picks that are going to make it through. And as far as the Iowa caucuses are concerned, uh, I think, you know, It's going to be clear. It's going to be Joe Biden, Bernie Sanders, or Elizabeth Warren. I I think they're going to take the top three spots. We'll find out later this evening. Now, in the, I'm going to wait until we get the final results from the from the caucus this evening uh, to confirm my suspicions. But in the second part of this video, I will start covering each candidate's viable candidate's position on the issues in the United States. So stay tuned for that. Don't get bored with me. This is stuff you need to know. So hang in there.